yeah, so the last presentation will be from Elise, uh, and I think she'll be talking about uh, this paper about identifying introductions in podcast episodes from, from the automatically generated transcripts. So Elise, the stage is yours. Yeah. Um, hi, everyone. My name is Elise, and I will be talking about the work that we done here at Pandora on um, identifying introductions in podcast episodes from automatically generated transcripts. Uh, yeah. Um, so as the amount of podcast contents and podcast listenership both explodes, it becomes more important for us to help the listeners find the podcasts that they're interested in. Mm -hmm. However, as some podcast episodes can be as long as several hours, it may be difficult for users to get a sense of the content before they dive in. According to this graph, only half of the people listens to the entire podcast, while some of the people only listen to a small portion of the podcast. So it would be great if we can find a way for users to preview the content before they commit to listening. Um, luckily, as the um, automatic speech recognition technologies progress, it becomes possible for us to have large scale of automatically transcribed contents that has a usable quality, which was not possible before. And also with the advanced NLP um, tools, we can now perform analysis on this transcript data. So here we address the question of identifying the introductions in podcast episodes. So the introductions can be used as a preview for users to sample content. And the good thing is that we can play the original audio to give the listeners an authentic, authentic feeling of the content. And they can also be used for recommendations and the promotions on and off platform. So what is actually an introduction? Um, in this work, we consider the introduction to be a segment of the episode that typically describes the episode's main subjects, contents, and the speakers. And notably, although the introduction shares similar topics in the vocabulary with the rest of the episode, its structural uniqueness makes it possible for listeners to recognize this. So um, this diagram shows one way in which the introductions can be placed in the episode. Um, so for the episode, um, we may have a music at the beginning, and then we may have a program introduction which talks about the general theme of the program. And this is often similar across all episodes in the program, and this is trivial to identify. So we focus on the episode introduction, and there can be ads inserted between each of these segments. And the episode introduction is often followed by the main body of the episode. So the data for our work is ASR transcripts generated by Google's speech to text service. Although the data scale is large, it is very noisy. For example, um, on this clip on the right, all the words in red are mistranscribed words. And the transcript data also have no punctuations, sentence boundaries, etc., making them more challenging to work with. Um, so at Pandora, we recruited a group of volunteers to annotate the introductions in these episodes manually. Um, using the content annotation tools that we developed, the volunteers can listen to the audio while looking at the transcript, and we ask them to mark the beginning and the end point of the introductions. Um, in total, we have annotated 417 episodes. And because it can be tricky to decide on the position of the intro, we have 117 episodes annotated by three independent labelers. 
and we tracked the agreement between these labelers. We found that um, for the most cases, we have either a full agreement or a majority agreement where two out of the three labelers agree on one position and only a few episodes have no agreement. The plot on the right shows the position of the introductions in the episodes. And although in many cases, the introduction starts right at the beginning, it can also start very late as long as 1000 words into the episode. And from the annotations, we also noticed that different podcast programs can be structured quite differently. So for one program, we might always have um, the episodes beginning with music, then program intro, and then episode intro. However, the other program may always have the episode intro coming before the program intro. So, um, to, um, to, so intuitively, um, if the model is trained on some episodes from a program, it will be much easier for it to work on the other episodes in this program. And to handle this, we created two different test sets. One is the episodes from the programs that the model is trained on, and the other is from the programs that the models have not seen. And our method is based on the BERT model. Um, for each episode, we break down the transcript into multiple spans, and this is because of BERT's input length limit. And then we train the model to label each token as part of the intro or not part of the intro. Then we remerge the spans into the original episodes. And because the model creates token level predictions, we needed to use a maximum difference algorithm to identify the boundaries of the intro. And we use a baseline from Globe embeddings and logistic regression. And we further use two data augmentation strategies to increase the amount of training data as our data set is not very large. And this diagram shows our whole pipeline. So we begin by having people annotate the episodes manually. Then we break down the transcripts into spans and feed them into the transformer model. Then we remerge the spans and do the boundary selection. And um, these are some more de details about our data augmentation techniques. So the base model is the pre-trained bird. And the first data augmentation strategy is the random word replacement based on TFIDF scoring. So we will replace only the relatively unimportant words. The other augmentation strategy is randomly applying token swap relation or crop. And next, I will go through the results of our work. And this plot um, gives us a general idea of the model's performance. Um, in these plots, each vertical line represents a token, where the dark lines are the tokens that the model considered to have a high probability of being in the intro, and the larger lines have a lower probability. And we found that for the base BERT model, as well as the data augmentation models, the models are able to identify blocks of tokens that aligns well with the ground truth, while the baseline finds high probability tokens throughout the text, and it's not able to find a consistent block. And with this general idea, we then examine the results quantitatively using two metrics. The first is accuracy. Um, so there's a lot of information in this table. I'll try to break it down. Um, so we show the results on the test set of seen programs on, at the top and the unseen programs at the bottom. We also consider the accuracy in identifying the start and the end of the intro separately. Um, here we consider accuracy versus various offsets. So an offset of zero means that the model is exactly correct. An offset of one means it's off by one token and so on. Um, 
and then the confidence intervals are shown in the parentheses. Um, we found that for the test set of C programs, the, um, the, the model with TF-IDF word replacement um, generally works the best and overperforms our baseline by over 25%. However, on the test set of unseen programs, the random augmentation model works the best, and probably because it is more resilient to the noise and the unknown data. And this also shows that the model is able to generalize towards unfamiliar data, while the baseline works really badly on the unfamiliar data. And additionally, we also evaluate our model by looking at the overlap between the predicted intro and the ground truth. On the left, um, this is the results on the scene programs. And here we found that the base bird model and the bird with TFIDF word replacement both works pretty well. And on the right, um, we found that the models generally um, is does um, do not do as well. However, the random augmentation model still does a little better than the other models. And finally, we look at the token embeddings learned by the models to better understand how they're learning to do this prediction. So we performed a principal component analysis on the token embeddings from the output in the first layer of the bird model as well as the final layer, that's the 12th layer. And at the first layer, we found several clusters, mainly clustering based on semantic meanings. For example, there was a cluster of personal pronouns, and there's another cluster of verbs such as do and does. And here, the uh, intro tokens and the not intro tokens are not separated. However, at the 12th layer, we found two pretty distinct clusters of the is intro and the not intro tokens. This tells us that the model has learned these tasks specific information at this layer. And so these are the main takeaways of our work. Um, we presented a novel data set of, of annotated ASL transcripts, and we hope that this data set can facilitate future work on the structure-based segmentation of ASR transcripts. And we also show that our models are resilient to the noise in ASR data, as well as the diverse structuring of the podcast episodes. And we believe that our models can be used to create podcast clips for preview and recommendations. And finally, um, on behalf of the other co-authors, I want to thank Chaitanya, Chen, Hachem, and Oscar for their comments on our manuscript. And we want to thank the content science team and all science people at Sirius Epson Pandora. And please feel free to contact us for discussion and questions. Great. Um, any questions from the audience? I mean, I, I, oh. I can get started. Oh, sorry, go ahead. So for uh, like introductions, uh, 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 can you do some like testing where users can select the specific introductions that they want to provide, like a, a specific interval of the podcast and later uh, compare it to the model you are trained and see which one is better because uh, I think, uh, do you have done like A-B testing? Um, Online sorry. testing. Sorry, I don't think I heard you very well. Uh, yeah, uh, I was talking about like uh, uh, for a podcast, like uh, they, if, uh, if, if a podcast already has an uh, introduction, like uh, users can choose a specific time interval which they want to like, which is a uh, like in YouTube they have 
like segment uh, of uh, videos that uh, they can users can choose from like is there such such a similar thing in podcast like there are segments yeah so um so uh, my understanding is uh you're saying that say other contents may have a specific preview but it's not yet available for 